you decided you want to work for the federal government, but where exactly should you work? I'm here to help you sort that out. Hello, everyone. My name is Fatima Mahmoud. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. This video reflects my own views and opinions, no one else's, and it's not been pre-approved or endorsed by any federal agency or other employer, academic program, or membership association. While I make my videos for people who want to get into the federal government and for people who are specifically paralegals, I hope that people who are not paralegals, who are in private and nonprofit sectors, as well as state local gov government, can also benefit from the information in my videos. Before we start, I want to ask you for a favor. Please go watch at least four of my videos from the same playlist because they cover content in detail that I think you need to know before you start to figure out which federal agency you want to work for. So please watch these videos and I will link them in the description below, but they are how to find a federal government paralegal job, which is the same search you can use if you are looking for a different job. Uh, informational interviews, the best way to meet people, how I network with people digitally. Again, it's about the human connection. That's going to help you with your search and how to manage references for a federal job. Please pause here, watch those videos, and then come back. I believe you're going to figure out where in the federal government you want to work for and work at through these six steps. You're gonna make a list and I'm gonna help you make that list. You're gonna do research. Uh, you'll, you'll see one of my videos, I talked about how to find jobs online for the federal government. You have to network with people directly. I already made a video about that. I made a few videos about applying that you can watch and some tips and tricks for applying, how to do your resume, how to do a gap analysis. Then you have to constantly update this information that you're gathering. And then you have to repeat all these steps. This is a continuous process. So whether you have a job now or you're looking for a job, uh, you are in between jobs. This is a continuous process, so it's not a one and done. Your list could be a spreadsheet. It could be a Word document. The important thing, it needs to be clear, free of clutter organized and easily accessible to you so that it makes it easy for you to go back into it, use it, leave it, and go back into it. The list I'm encouraging you to make, I'm going to show you a public version of that list that I made for myself. If you connect me with me on LinkedIn, which I'll show you how to do at the very end of this video, you go to my profile, you go to my featured post, and you keep scrolling to the right, you see all my featured items in my post, you scroll down, keep going. I made a list of which government agencies hire paralegals. It's called Fatima's, Fatima's List. This one is last updated 2022. At, from time to time, I updated it. This list you can download. If you go into this full screen view, here's this list you can download. I'm not sure if you can see the corner but I'll exit out of this. But basically you can download this. I'll show it to you in this view. Right now you see this as a, as a projection of a PDF, but I have this as a spreadsheet and then I used uh, pivot tables to make these clean lists. Here I have so far 43 uh, federal agencies and offices that hire paralegals. Uh, if you watched my finding paralegal jobs on USA jobs.gov video, you will see how I do searches that allow me to do this. And that's where I pull this information from. And then going through my list, you'll see I have the top level name of the agency within it. So sometimes it's an agency, sometimes it's a department. Those It'll be an office, it'll be a bureau. These are the broad level, top level names. And then within that, they may have departments, divisions, offices, just all these different sub-levels to a federal agency, a federal department. I keep records of those and so that I can see uh, in the Army, there's this Center for uh, Initial Military Training. Underneath that, there's a Office of the Staff Advocate, et cetera, et cetera, to see at what level, what is the smallest level at which they are hiring paralegals. And you can obviously do the same 
through you, your USA job searches that you save and then put into your own list. My list goes on for 14 pages, but you'll get a drift. You'll be able to tell if you are looking for position X and in this agency, position X only works in one part of the agency versus if position X is in different offices throughout the agency. So that's something for you to research and keep in mind. Here's a couple additional things I want to show you on USA Jobs. Certain job titles are very defined and specific, and therefore searches of them on USA Jobs can be really easy. So if you do paralegal, you will get so many hits. And as you know from my other uh, videos, I like to look over here on the filter side and filter by departments and this is the date this is part of the data that will be going into your list remember i always talk about pdf save download because information from the internet can always go away another one that's pretty easy is attorney it lots of hits you get lots of agencies very well defined role generally economist as well uh, you'll see all the places, you'll see all the uh, different agencies that hire them that you can look through. Uh, if we search nurse, these are very much established professional roles that can be found. I recently helped someone and they have a social work background and it was challenging for me to think about which federal agencies definitely hire social workers to do specific social work roles or do they hire someone with a social work background and education and credentials and they give them other job titles so here we have a few titles that are social work but they can also be program coordinator uh domiciliar chief inpatient uh senior social worker uh, it could be a variety of roles and responsibilities it could not necessarily be completely uniform compared to other positions um, and it could be predominantly in a certain amount of agencies and not so widespread throughout the entire federal government so for example might be related more to health and social work or veterans affairs that sort of thing and always remember to check other agencies and independent organizations because a lot of different uh, agency names can fall underneath that that you don't always think about like my employer CFPB uh, and even my past employer FTC might fall under uh, the other and independent agencies now you've gathered your information, your data, your documents from USA Jobs or another online site, and now you need to focus on making the columns in your list. Here are the columns that you should definitely, at bare minimum, put in. So federal government agencies could be called agencies, departments, bureaus, commissions, offices, etc. It's diverse range of names for the top level name of this organization make sure you know it clearly within one layer down they may have divisions or sections and then within that they might have offices or even sub levels of that make sure you're noting all of these very clearly and generally USA jobs postings do a good job of that and then you need to also start to note and collect website links the website links I'm talking about, and the reason why I'm not saying like do these in favorites on your web browser or do these in uh, like a collections on your web browser, that the list, doing it in a list in a spreadsheet Word document can help things stay more organized and easier to find with keyword searches in the documents. So the website links you should definitely be saving and therefore reading the agency's main website, the sub part of the office's website the press offices link where they post the press releases about work that the agency and specific offices are doing. If you do public searches on Google, whatever search engine for this agency, find some that you really like, that you find are really important and impactful.
helpful on you and save links to those. You can Google employee morale and the agency or any organization's name and see if employees are going public with information about what's going on inside the agency. And also nowadays, plenty of federal agency have YouTube channels that is there is carefully crafted, carefully vetted, so it's been really pre-approved. And a lot of work goes into those videos, not just the amount of work that any person creating YouTube videos puts in, but there are multiple levels of approval that went into all of the content. So definitely take advantage because that is information that the agency definitely wants the public to know. So it only benefits you to watch those videos, Watching one of those videos could help you prepare or talk about points in an interview. I'll mention a few others very briefly. Of course, the agencies have a careers page where they have either the actual job posting on there or a link to the posting that actually lives and breathes on USA Jobs. Of course, online, there are so many uh, posting forums where employees can discuss a company or an agency and reveal information. Read those carefully because a lot of times they're anonymous so you don't know the source and you can't judge the credibility of the source yourself. Now you've gathered all of this research, you actually have to invest time and read. Nowadays, finding a job is a full-time job. Online, you'll find lots of articles about how even qualified people making six figures take a long time to find a job. It's very true. You have to carve out time in your schedule, even if you're working full time or part time, to research, read, note things. Don't just keep things in your head. You have to clarify what you know through networking with people, and then you repeat the process. Now we dig into the core of this work. You have to actually meet people who at the most, the best situation is the people who currently have or had have the exact job that you want to work at. And you know what the job is because you found the job posting on USA Jobs or you read something on one of the websites. If you can't find that person, find someone who works in the exact office that you want to work for work in. And if that doesn't work, you can at least start start by finding someone who works in the exact agency you want to work, talk to them, and perhaps they can start introducing you step by step to getting closer to finding people who work in the exact job, in the exact office that you want to work at. How do you meet these people? Well, I've had at least three videos in which I talk about networking. Uh, I might add more videos about networking, but I do want you to learn from my tips in those videos, so please take a look. And I want to make sure as you combine networking and the research that you do and the list that you're making that some of the steps are very clear. You are likely going to find online USA Jobs a job posting description of the job and you say, I want that job. I, I want to do this work. So the easiest thing is you can go to an online forum, whether it's LinkedIn or some other social media. And the easiest thing to do is to type in the name of the agency and or the office and start to find lots of people who work there. And then you might want to do a combined search with the agency, the office and the job title that you're looking for and maybe that's how you're going to find people who have done or are currently doing the exact job that you want but if you can't find people on linkedin who currently do this exact job uh, you can start by again even on linkedin finding people at the agency finding people at the office sending them linkedin messages but also seeing if your existing connections on LinkedIn are second degree or third degree connections to these people who work where you want to work. A lot of this definitely sounds right now like common sense, but people even overlook this. And of course, you can use this for government, but you can use this for private sector and nonprofit sector. I've always been an advocate of informational interviews. You have access to my video on that, but I've done some research coaching of other people in their careers as well as giving advice and it's highlighted for me why informational interviews are even more important. What I realized is that there are certain questions you can ask about the position, the environment, and the people that you can ask before you even apply 
that will be received better at that stage than if you apply, you submitted all your documentation, and then you are in the official hiring process and you ask the same question and it can be taken the wrong way. So again, asking about real deal, real talk, certain types of questions before makes it easier for certain people to answer your questions versus if you ask the same questions, even as simple as could you, you don't work in this office, you're not involved in the hiring, but could you introduce me to people who do work in the office? Certain types of organizations can receive that as someone circumventing the official hiring process. So it all depends on the place, but that's again another reason why I advocate asking questions beforehand through informational interviews rather than looking for these answers after you've applied. One of the things that's important in informational interviews is you need to yourself be open to hearing negative and real talk about the organization, the office, the people, and the culture. If all you want to hear is positive things, that will have an impact on your ability to make sound decisions about where to go. And with that, uh, some people are in situations where they really need to be employed very quickly and they might be willing to take offers that come very quickly or take offers that come very quickly, but they haven't broadened the scope of places they've applied to. In that context, you still need to be open to hearing negative and real information so you can make better informed decisions about where you're going to work because once you start working somewhere if you try to leave too quickly it can look bad on you professionally if you're trying to get out and go to another job that really is a great fit for you and in the same vein when you're having this informational interview or conversations with people who have the information that you really need you need something from them they don't really need something from you you have to make them comfortable enough with you such that they trust you with the negative information they trust you with real talk because it's safer for them to pretend like everything is going well and it's a risk to tell a stranger negative or real things. So keep that in mind. It's your responsibility to make people comfortable sort of in person or on a video call to tell you the real deal. Because of certain global and cultural and technological issues, I feel that human beings have recently sort of decreased the old skills they had in forming relationships and contact and being social with each other. And we need to get back into certain old habits, old routines of actually connecting in person, real life with people. And this goes towards helping you find the place where you want to eventually work. Of course, you're going to, in all of this networking, you're going to ask people to meet you. You're going to be very polite. I encourage people to meet in person a lot of times because of transportation and schedules that doesn't work. I do encourage people to meet people virtually on video cameras instead of just phone calls because I think there's a lot of value in gleaning emotional intelligence cues from people by looking at them even through a screen to see their face mannerisms body language and also there's an element of more truthfulness that can come through when you see someone through a video versus if it's just a phone call and you're only hearing a voice that depends there's exceptions to that rule based on people's physical ability Abilities and people with disabilities. Uh, when you, after you meet with people, send quick thank yous. Don't stress too much over the thank yous, but it's just good to thank people at each stage. It is also your responsibility because you need to gather this information for yourself to find a job in the federal government that you want for you to follow up and for you to update these people that help you with small updates. Like I have some interviews or I'm still looking and I still remember you. Thank you for your help please, I hope you will continue to keep me in mind if you have any information in the future that you think might help me. And in all of this, it's really, really important to maintain your contact list. The first and last names of people you meet, obviously you might have their LinkedIn profile that gives you a sense of where they work and their history and their education and their other contacts, but you need to have their contact information. 
cells and email numbers or WhatsApp or whatever way is best to reach them. You need to know what their preferred or fastest way to reach them is. And you need to write down, as you take notes about what they tell you when you meet them, you need to write a couple of quick notes about the person, sort of who they know, what their style is, how they like to do things, what generally is their outlook on life, because that's really going to inform the advice they give you. Someone who's a very spontaneous person, someone who's very carefree, takes a lot of risks in life, might also their advice might be slanted towards a lot of very broad ideas, a lot of taking risks and chances and trying out new things. Whereas a person who is a bit more reserved, a bit more cautious, the nature of their advice to you is going to be less spontaneous. It's going to urge you to be more critical, more cautious. So you need to take a little bit of notes on these aspects of people because you cannot just memorize all the information that you learn about people and what they know about workplace environments. So far, the information has been as if you are outside the federal government, you don't have any government experience, and you're trying to enter in. Let's think about the people who are interested in moving to federal government. They are from local government, they're from state, or they're from a nonprofit that does re very related uh, client facing, public facing work, uh, because on that same level, it's still all public service. There are often the work in government could be, for example, me as a paralegal, I work in investigations, legal investigations. There's also government work that is really project based. You could be someone who works at a peer agency doing or covering the same scope of work. Also, if one agency is working on a project or investigation, it could partner with another federal agency, a state or local agency that has the same jurisdiction or authority or scope of work. So peers might not necessarily work together, but they sort of know each other. They may attend similar networking meetings or summits or conferences. Partners actually collaborate on non-public work together. You could be in those spaces and you're trying to move to federal government or into a different federal agency, or perhaps you work in that same sphere fear in the same scope of work that the federal government agency you're interested in works in but you don't ha you still don't have that same contact but the subject matter is very similar for those people it still becomes important to maintain your contact list it you need to keep track of names of people who you meet that do work in the office that you're potentially interested you need to know their sort of their offices their divisions you need to know about the hierarchy and usually what happens when people in federal government and outside federal government are working together or across federal agencies you have to talk a lot about approvals and who has to, what your bosses say and what your bosses approve so through those conversations if you pay attention and you take good notes you'll understand sort of the hierarchy within the organization that isn't always apparent on publicly available organizational charts. If you're sort of working with these people or definitely are working with these people in, collabor in collaborative ways, the uh, step to add them on LinkedIn and then strike up conversations, half off the book meetings with them to discuss certain things, like what is their place of work like, that's a much easier easier ask and much easier thing to do. It's very natural. It might not sort of raise any eyebrows or let people in on information that you might be trying to make a change. If you are, from the legal perspective, in the private sector at a law office or law firm, and you work in a particular subject area, you might be representing clients who have to deal directly with the federal government, with the investigations or projects. And so then you should be keeping lists of uh, which agencies, which offices are looking at your clients, but also what are the exact people who are doing the work. Again, I'm in legal, so it's not just attorneys contact government attorneys contacting 
private attorneys and their clients, but it could be support staff. So you're just going to come across lots of names, lots of emails. And if you could take time to invest and maintain your contact list, know who's who, who's doing what work, never underestimate the work people do, never underestimate someone only based on their job title. You never know what connection or what information leads to the next thing. I know a lot of what I've talked about so far seems like common sense, but the more that I talk to people, even people who are highly educated, have been professional jobs for a long time, I find that sometimes common sense gets overlooked, especially in some of the smaller details, and people don't, when they feel like they're struggling, they don't realize that they, they know more than what they know, and they're able to do a lot more than they think they can do, so long as you lay it out as clearly as I've laid it out, as you want to find a place to work in the federal government, one of the best tools for you is to make a list, you know the columns that I've suggested, you have to do your research, you have to read, you have to take notes, taking good notes throughout the whole process is the key that's going to really help you. You have to network with people and I've given you tips on that. You have to apply and I've given some tips on that. And then you have to update your information. You have to update yourself. You have to stay updated with people and give them information about you as you go through the process and check in with people. And then you go back and you repeat. This is a continuous process. Even if you're already working in federal government, some of these tasks are also still good for you, especially to maintain your contact list as you work on different projects or investigations and work with different people inside and outside your federal agency. If you really want to go the extra mile in doing your research on federal government jobs for the particular position that you are looking for, there is an option for you to do FOIA request, Freedom of Information Act. Maybe one day I'll do a whole series of these, but basically you can request information about the government from the government and the law allows you to receive certain types of information. You are allowed to ask for copies of job vacancy announcements or job postings that may no longer be active on USA Jobs. Job postings and announcements are connected to position descriptions with the documents that describe and control the actual job. You are allowed to ask for salary information in the forms SF50s for federal employees so you can know generally what do people in this position actually make and how long have they been in these positions. You're also allowed to ask for government employee contact information because not all employee information is in an online directory on the agency's websites. And that is a way that you can find people by their name and if they have the exact job positions and titles that you are looking for. This might be something I do in the future, but this is an option if people want to really take it to the next level to find out where they can work in the federal government. Even though I've been very detailed, I hope that these lists, these tips and tricks, and these process that I've laid out for you will help you really come up with an answer to where should you work in the federal government. I wish you the best in your search. Thank you for watching my video. I'd love to hear from you on email at fmahmood at wellesley.edu. You can also find me on LinkedIn at that address. And if you do send me a connection request, please go ahead and send me a note. Before you go, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. And please go ahead and watch my next video. Thank you.